Okay, so let's have a look at Part B for McCormick <clears throat> 2022 exam paper. It says prepare a balance sheet. So before you tackle this, you need to know the layer of your balance sheet. So when we come through a balance sheet, we're going to put the heading in. So balance sheet from McCormick FTD has at 21st to 12th, 21. So make sure it's as at. We're going to be tangible assets. And tangible assets are always going to be underneath the heading cost, the cumulative depreciation, and book value. Okay, so always have your heading, always have it as at. Then you're going to have your first. Heading is going to be tangible assets, cost, net book value, and cumulative depreciation. Now we know back at the question, we've got two um, two tangible assets, land and building and office equipment. So we're going to have land and building. And office equipment. And these are all going to be taken from the workings. So we're going to have working speech on these. So our cost, let's go back to our workings and see what our costs are for land and buildings. So 1,640,000. Accumulated depreciation then. So that's going to be working five. And then we have 12,800. Working five and working eight. smaller and we're going to take those two away from each other to give you a net book value then we're going to have office equipment so that's going to come from i think it's working for so our cost is four hundred forty thousand. cumulative depreciation off from working for is 131,800 and we're going to take them away from each other and that's working for. Then we're going to add our cost up. And we're going to add up our cumulative depreciation. And then we're going to add up our net book value. And that's going to give us your total then for your tangible assets. Then we're going to have intangible assets. So items that we can't see. And that's usually going to be your patents or patents. So patents then we're going to have a working then for patents. We're working 15, so 48,750. And then the next one's going to be financial assets, which are your investments. And that's taken straight from your trial balance. So 4% financial assets, 75,000. I'm just going to put in 4% in front of that. We want to add these three up together. So remember that your cost and cumulative depreciation is just for your tangible assets. There's going to be no cost or cumulative depreciation for patents or financial investments or for your 4% uh, investments. So we're going to get the total for each one of them. I'm just going to add them up. And your next item then is your current assets. Now the majority of these are going to be coming from your workings. So we know your current assets you always start with closing stock. So it's usually our first working for your closing stock. So it's 75,400. It's working one. Then you're going to take your debtors figure. It's 
going to be working as well. It's going to find your data speed, but we're going to take away the provision. So data is usually at the end somewhere. Provisions at the end. So here's our data here. So our data is our 278,800. You're going to take away your provision. So that is working. It's working 10. Then we're going to have lots of provisions. Provisions are. 7,134 7, and that is working 20 so we're going to take these away from each other and then we're going to be looking at anything due to us so we're going to have investments due So that's going to be part of the patents adjustment. So 1,250. Then we're going to have the compensation. So your investment working is working 14, I think it is. That's some in, uh, compensation then. Working six. And then, so we have a look down here. Anything else that might go in? So, our VAT is one that they'll try to trick you up on. So if you look at our VAT, if the VAT's on the credit side, it's a liability. If it's on the debit side, it's an asset. So this VAT is going to be an asset. So you need to include that as a 1,000. And all we're going to do is add those figures up. And then we're going to find the creditors due within one year and take them away from each other. Our next heading then, our creditors due within one year. So make sure you call it creditors due within one year and not current liabilities. So your first items would be a creditor. So we'll have a working then for a creditor. So working three seventy five thousand. Um, let's, let's have a look at our trial balance and just work through our trial balance and we'll see what creditors are there. So you've got the venture interest due would be another one that we put in there. Because that's the venture interest is a liability, we have to pay it. It's having to pay it yet, so let's have a look and see what our venture interest due is. So 12,000 working 18. Let's go back and see what else we have. So bench interest use investments in, stock is in, patents is in, purchases, creditors are in, bank, it's your bank overdraft, that's going to be working as well. So let's have a look at our workings for your bank overdraft. So then it's going to be 53,900, working 9, working 9, so 
We got bank wages, debentures, dividends paid, director's fees. So we don't have director's fees, but we have the commission. So the commission that was in from our directors is towards the end. Seven thousand working nineteen. What other items do we have? We got PAYE PSI twenty seven thousand two hundred. We can put trial balance. And then I think we have some form of taxation. Oh yeah, provision for corporation tax. 60,000 to record it, so we need to include that as well. So, corporation tax hasn't been paid yet. 60,000. So, we're going to add all of them up. And then, we're going to take them away from our assets. And then, we're going to add those these two figures in together to get your total net assets. So that's going to be our total net assets. And then we have our finance by. So our finance by section is made up of creditors due over one year. That's going to be the benchers. So the bench is usually taken straight from the question itself. Six percent of three sixty is our debentures. And then we're going to have capital and reserve. We're going to have it authorized and issued. So these are coming. So these are going to be capital. They're coming straight from the question itself. So you can see from our question, our authorized is 150 and 100. So you got preference and ordinary. So what to say? Okay, so you got one million, one point five million, and one million. The authorizing the preference shares, and then what's the issue then is coming straight from the trial balance as well. So if you look straight at the trial balance, you'll see what we have issued for our ordinary shares down here. So one million and three hundred fifty thousand. So we're going to add up the authorized. Well, it's going to be authorized just how much shares we've authorized to issue. It can't go over 2.5 million. Our issue then is 1,350,000. Then we got capital and reserve just for this question, which is 250,000. And then our balance then is 288,000. Sorry, now. So this 286,266. That's come from a profit and loss balance that we had just calculated. These three are going to be added together to give us a total here. And then this, these two figures then are added up to give your cap and plug. And remember your total net assets and your cap and plug must be the same figures. Because these are total net assets that we have. This is how much money we have to finance the business. So it should be the same. And that's the same layout that you're going to have for all your balance sheets. Just to put in the correct figures for each one. So hope this helps. If you have any questions, just send me on a message.